Okay. Uh, very excited about what uh, is happening now. I want you to understand something. God is going to show up, show off in such a marvelous way during these days. The Bible said we're going to be awestruck. That means we're going to be so stunned we can't hardly believe what we're seeing. And I love that because today I want to talk to us uh, about, I think, a very serious uh, situation in the body of Christ. We've got to learn to ascend to the next new level. We've got to find out this pathway that breaks out from spiritual stagnation and helps us to overcome spiritual stagnation and move into the next dimension with God. Psalms 84, 11 says, uh, he says, he, no good thing will the Lord withhold from those that are walking upright. He, Almighty God, will give us present day favor, future, glory, honor, splendor, and heavenly bliss. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about getting on the pathways that leads past spiritual stagnation. God wants us to come into his presence. The Bible said, and I heard a voice which said, come up here. And I looked and there was a door, a gate, a portal standing open in heaven. Whoa, see, God wants to draw, God wants to draw us closer to him. And I saw a portal standing open in heaven and I heard a voice which said, come up here. And I looked and there was a door, a gate, a portal standing open in heaven. The Lord is beckoning us to come higher. Okay, so we've never been where we're going now. Now, there's fresh winds blowing, and I'll tell you what, it's going to blow away that familiarity like, yeah, been there, done that. Well, we hadn't been where we're going now. That's what it says. Joshua chapter 3 says, prepare the people. Let them know they've never been where they're going now. And I'm telling you, beloved, uh, we need to understand God is going to do some new things. I want to give you three points. Uh, three points on how to overcome spiritual stagnation. Number one, hunger. Spiritual hunger. Oh, Psalms 42, verse 1 and 2. Listen to this. It says, As a little desert deer pants after the water brook, so pants my soul after thee, O God. I long for you, O God. My inner self thirsts for you, God. The living God, when shall I come and behold the face of God? That's, that's that cry of your heart. Oh God, I want to know more about you. I want to be more intimate with you. Psalms 42, uh, one, uh, verses 1 and 2. Here's Psalm 63, verse 1 and 2. Listen to what it says. Oh Lord, you are my God. Earnestly will I seek you. My inner self, my soul, thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you like in a dry and weary land where there is no water. And it says, so have I looked upon you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. Oh, listen. Here's a, a desperation to get into the presence of God and the presence of God get into us. We'll have nothing to do with the mundane, just ever bed. No, God wants to do a new thing. Behold, it springs forth now. I'll tell you, the Bible said it'll be a, such a thing. We'll be awesome struck if we can't hardly believe our eyes here's you one psalms 143 verse oh, verse 3 listen to this psalms 143 verse 3 i spread out my hands to you i thirst for you like in a parched land this is a desperate soul seeking after god saying oh god i, I want to be in your presence so three points three little points that'll Help us to sweep away that old spider web of stagnation. Well, you know, this is how it's always been. It's not going to be how it's always been. Fresh wind is here. Fresh fire is here. Uh, God says a new and a living way. Okay, first thing you've got to have is hunger. Spiritual hunger. That's what we just got through talking about. As a little desert deer pants after the water brook, so pants my soul after thee, O God. Psalms 42, 1 and 2. I thirst for you like in a dry and weary land. And now, now we're going to move from hunger to what? Holiness. These two go together. These, go, these two go together. You know, the, the Bible talks about being holy. Listen to these verses. Psalms 24, 3 and 4. A great question is brought before us. Here it is. Who shall go up into the mountain of the Lord or who shall ascend into his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up himself in falsehood or to what is not true, but he's not sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessings from the Lord and the righteousness from the God of his salvation. That's Psalms 24, 3 and 4. I love the Bible. It does not ask questions without inserting answers. The question was, who's going to draw up into the presence of the Lord? Who's going to get in his holy place? He that hath clean hands. And it tells us how to do that. And here's, here's how you do it. Hebrews, say Hebrews 12, verse 14. 
pursue peace with all people and holiness for which for without which no one will see the Lord. Oh, we've got to pursue peace and we've got to pursue holiness. Hebrews 12, 14 says, strive to live at peace with everybody and pursue that consecration and holiness which by which no one will ever see the Lord. It, we've got to be holy. So we've got to have hunger. Blessed are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness. They shall be filled. Blessed are those that are, are hunger for holiness. And here's one. This one may not seem like a, a very spiritual thing to you, but happiness. A merry heart does good like a medicine. In his presence is fullness of joy. So we got hunger, we've got holiness, and we got happiness. Now you can't put happiness up before any of these because what brings about happiness is holiness and, and hunger. It really does. Oh, listen to this, Psalm 6, 16, verse 11. Happiness uh, is a really, really important. And it says a good, a good attitude really will help us. It says, you will show me the pathway of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand, there's pleasures forevermore. Let's get into the pr presence of God. Let's let the presence of God get into us and let's learn what it means to have a happy heart. A merry heart does good like a medicine. The Bible says the, the, the peace of God will keep our heart and Romans 16 20 said the God of peace will crush Satan under our feet. Oh, the Spirit of God is asking how many of you are ready to uh, go to the next new level? The doorway is open. The new things are right at hand. Remember, you remember not the former things. He said, behold, I do a new thing. It's going to spring forth now. And so what we got to do, we got to position ourselves to, to be hungry, holy, and happy. Oh, a merry heart does good like a medicine. The joy of the Lord is our what? Strength. I'll tell you what, instead of going, oh, Bobby, I am so just so discouraged. I am so disheartened. Stop that. Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights in whom there's no variableness nor shadow of turning. And every good gift we have comes from holy God. And God is bestowing upon us blessings that we don't have room enough to receive them. So I encourage us, let's don't let the devil get us downcast and hopeless. Hebrews 10, 35 says, do not. Do not fling away your steadfast confidence in God because your steadfast confidence in God brings with it a great recompense of reward. We would say in our language, hold on to hope. Hope pays big dividends. Oh God, God wants us to be filled with hope, but the devil wants us to be hopeless. And the Bible says, let us not grow weary in well-doing. We will reap if we faint not. Keep our focus on the Lord. And Isaiah 26, 3, that will keep him in what? Perfect peace. Perfect. You can't get better than perfect. Perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon the Lord. So the devil's going to try to disturb you, distract you, get your mind off of God. No, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he's near. Let, let, let the unrighteous man forsake his way. I'm telling you, get in the presence of God. Let the presence of God get into you. Begin to worship him and love him and laud him with praise and honor. And you'll be surprised how bold the Lord will give you. They were, uh, the, we need to understand the righteous shall be as bold as a lion. I like that. You know, uh, I, I know that some people uh, are, are uh, not as aggressive as others, but I don't like it when the church is backing off. Oh, I'm afraid, you know, I'm afraid if I really push the gospel that I lose some friends. Listen, listen, don't be full of fear. God did not give us the spirit of fear the spirit of fear, but love, power, and a well-disciplined mind. I want us to be bold and brave and very courageous. Colossians, uh, Joshua 1, 9. Be bold, be brave, be very courageous. Go do what God has commissioned you to do because you're not going by yourself. Who's going with you? Jeremiah 20, 11. The Lord is with me as a mighty warrior, a, a dread champion. Therefore, those that are persecuting me and trying to harass me will not prevail. So this is Bobby Connor, Eagles View Ministry. Thank you for watching Bobby's briefings. 
I want you to come to some of the schools we're going to be doing. I'm going to be in Lancaster, California in just a few weeks. Look, at, look on our webpage there. You'll see it there at uh, Joe Sweet's Church, uh, Shekinah Worship Center, Lancaster, California. Oh, we're going to have a time. I'm going to be doing a, a school on the centricity of Christ. All things were created for Him, by Him, and by Him. All things cohere and hold together. We're going to find out the, the more about the supremacy of Christ. Oh man, on Christ's solid rock I stand. All else is sitting sand. We're going to find that firm foundation. No firmer foundation can any man lay than that which is laying in Christ. So uh, look on the web page, find out where the, uh, the, we're going to be in these meetings and come join us. I promise you this, there will be an impartation of the presence and the power of God manifesting in your life because God says, I want to feed the hungry. I want you to be overflowing with the one wonderful things of God. Ephesians 3, 20 and 21 says, Now unto him, almighty God, that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or dare to imagine. Let's jerk the lids of limitation off and say, God, I know you can do anything. And let's watch him do the supernatural and the miraculous. It says multitudes believed on him when they saw the miracles he did. So this is Bobby Connor, Eagles View Ministry. Thank you so much for watching. I am very excited. We're in a season of seeking the Lord. The shepherd's rod is uh, just coming be here uh, in, in a few days and weeks, and we're going to have a glorious time. God's going to reveal mystic mysteries and secrets. He's going to move us to that next new level. God bless you, and God bless your family. Thank you for watching Bobby's Briefings.